our next speaker names all of their pets after Star Wars. They had two guinea pigs named Sto uh, Stormtrooper and Chewbacca, and they have a dog named Rogue One. Please welcome Molly. Um, what's Beethoven's favorite fruit? I heard somebody knows it. <laughs> Banana. -na. <laughs> so fun. Um, okay, I also promised Jared I would get us back on track. So I'm going to try really hard to keep this to like 14 or 15 minutes and not 20. Um, so I am Molly Huey. I'm the team lead for data, legal analytics, and business at Bloomberg Law. We call ourselves Data Lab. I'm repping our team t-shirt. Come see me later. Um, our team consists of data scientists, graphic designers, and legal analysts. And our job is to create data-driven thought leadership for the legal market. Um, much of our work is with survey data. And we work with legal analysts throughout the organization on the front end to make sure that we're asking the right questions because I'm not a lawyer. My data scientists aren't lawyers. Um, so we want to get the questions right. But then we work with them again on the back end to make sure that they know how to use the data appropriately. So as you could probably guess, most of our stakeholders and our end users are non-technical people. So a lot of our job is being that translator. Like, we can do the data work. You all can do the data work. I don't actually need to show you demos of actual data things. What I'm going to do is show you all the features and functions that we've made that make it work for our colleagues. So I broke this down into our three A's of our data for everyone. Accessibility. This is like. Oop, I just kicked over my water bottle. OK, so what I, I said before, my value here is to talk about managing the communications across the teams when you have technical and non-technical people as stakeholders. Um, and I'm building that into how we on our team use Shiny to make that happen. Um, so I want to give all the credit for all this great stuff I'm going to show you to my data science team, Linda and Princess, are here. Yay, girls team. And um, also Jackie Palmer and Tom Shen, who did a lot of the um, initial building of all of this stuff I'm going to show you. So back to our three A's. Accessibility. Um, your stakeholders need to be able to access your data. Like They have to be able to get to it, play with it, ideally in a user-friendly way. So this is where all the shiny comes in. I'm going to get back to that in a second. We also need appropriate training. Because it's no good to give people access to data if they don't know either how to look for it or what to do with it once they have it. Um, so to that end, my team does a lot of internal trainings. We do classes on um, everything from basic numeracy, like teaching people legit how to round appropriately. We teach that. I, I know. I see faces out there. It, it's true. <laughs> the lawyers and the reporters we work with are very, very smart. But some of them have actually told me they went to law school to not have to do numbers. Like when I ask them to open Excel, their mind is just blown. <laughs> so we, we do a lot of trainings. We do basic numeracy. We do intro to statistics. We do um, data visualization and graphing best practices. Like really, what chart do you use? You know, People come up with things that add to more than 100, and they're like, it doesn't fit in my pie. Wrong chart. So we, we do a lot of, <laughs> a lot of that. Um, so then finally, availability and follow-up. Um, good story. So your data, your, your analysts, your stakeholders, they can get to your data. They can do it. They're like, yes, I know what I'm doing. And then they come up with something that they don't know what they're doing. And they try to run with it. And you're like, ah, that's good. Oops, sorry. What did I do there? I did like four slides in a row. Back to this one. OK. So what was I doing? I was telling you a story. Um, so we did have somebody that was using some of our data. And he goes, I'm going to do this. It's great. And we're like, no. But he's like, but I got it from your dashboard. Mm. Yes, you did. But no, that's not how you use it. So that's kind of be available for your good follow-up. All right, now I can show you all the things. But I'm going to go back just a little bit in the Wayback Machine. Um, so by way of background, I started at Bloomberg about six and a half years ago, and it was only a couple of years after Bloomberg acquired BNA, the Bureau of National Affairs, which is a well-known publisher of legal content, publisher like legit books, like lots of big, thick books. Um, and I started working with a team that conducted surveys that BNA had run for 40 years. When I got there and my supervisor was like, hey, here's your file cabinet of all your survey data, I went and I looked through it. 
there were paper copies of surveys with PII from before I was born. So this was, this is not good things. So yeah, I digress. We used to run the same surveys over and over and over again, and we would use SPSS, and we would hold onto that data really tightly, and we would do things like this. Paper copy report. It would have, this is our short one, it had 45 pages. Our long ones had 300, and we would legit put tables, every single table, in an appendix in the back, and just say, here you go, and hand it off. I don't think this is a really good way to work with stakeholders about data. Like, yeah, they, d they didn't like us, and they didn't know how to come to us, and they didn't know how to ask questions. We would just hand them a report and say bye. So in 2018, we reorged, we gave the data team much more visibility, and we tried to start building those relationships and saying, okay, what do you guys really want? We started doing surveys, brand new ones, and people were so excited. They're like, oh wait, I can, I can ask whatever question I want. I've got some things I wanna know about the legal industry. So we're trying to get the leading edge content right, and we're trying to work with um, non-data folk. Enter shiny dashboards. Here's where we get to the R and the shiny parts. Um, so as expected, our folks were really, really excited to have I keep doing that. Um, to have access to Shiny, to new platforms, to get all their data. And so we built them. And this, the picture I was kind of trying to scroll over, that's our index. Like, this is the index of our server. And we're like, yeah, we're going to build the dashboard. We're going to put it right here. And this did not work very well for people because what we did was we built this dashboard and we did a new one for every survey. And they worked, but it was people had a hard time finding it. They were like, oh, I can't remember the link to my project. Can you send me that link again? Where's my project or where's this one? And when we started to do some things year over year for trending, they're like, well, I, that's the dashboard for last year's one. Where's the dashboard for this year's one? So that's kind of where my fourth A comes in is be agile. Like We had to change some stuff up. We had to keep continually innovating and really learning and listening from each other to figure out the best way to make this data useful in our organization. So what I'm gonna do now is run you through a bunch of the steps. Like here's where we started and all the iterations and innovations we've done since, which I think are really cool. And I'm actually not gonna show you any code whatsoever because while I can, um, and I had, I actually took a class with Jared. We brought him down to Bloomberg a couple years ago, pre-pandemic. Um, the data scientists on my team are way way better. So if you want to know any of the code that goes behind any of this stuff that I'm going to show you, go talk to Linda and Princess. They're here. Um, and I'm totally throwing them under the bus. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so here's, I want to show you what we had from the very beginning. You can actually see that pretty well. This is what pops up when you click on your survey project. You have some stuff down the left rail that'll tell you, you know, where things are. You've got a drop down menu at the top where you could pull, pull down whichever survey question you want and get a table. One of the things that works really well on this from our original dashboard is this download button. So we pull the tables, we pull them into this dashboard, it aggregates them, you get your counts and your percentages. What we have to do at Bloomberg, because it's Bloomberg, is we can't use the stuff like HighCharter to make a nice chart. It makes a great chart but we can't publish it. And we publish forward-facing content. And so we have a program that's built into the Bloomberg terminal. So if you're finance people, you know that's Bloomberg's flagship product. Um, there's a program built in called Toaster. I don't really know why they called it Toaster, but the story I like to tell myself is that you put in pre-tabulated data and like, bing, like toast, out pops your graphic. Nicely brand standard. So we have to use that in published content. So we created this download to CSV or Excel, and so people can look at the table and say, oh yeah, that, I want a bar chart about that. And so they click the little download button and they get their tabulated data in Excel or CSV that's almost entirely ready for Toaster or perfect. So then they just hop over to the terminal, do that, and then they've got their ready to publish content. And this is the thing we're really trying to do with our stakeholders is let them self-serve the data. Teach them how to use it, teach them how to do it, so that we're not always doing every individual thing for them. Um, we also have a tab on here for data visualizations. Thanks, hi, Charter. Um, I find that this is a lot more useful in talking our stakeholders through the data to see a visual rather than a table. Um, but again, you can't publish it. So we have these on here, and after every survey project, we have a meeting, and, and we walk through the data 
with all the stakeholders and the end users and say, here's what we found. Here's what's interesting. And they go, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. And then they go and run with it and publish stuff, or, or we do sometimes. Um, so kind of the next iteration of that <laughs> is this multi-survey dashboard. The thing that we found you know, with the giant index I showed you and even the original survey dashboards that worked really well is that it wasn't all in one place. So we created this multi-survey dashboard. It's like, welcome to the survey dashboard. Everything is here. Our stakeholders can bookmark this one link and go to this one dashboard. And what you're seeing on this slide is, this is our intro slide. It's like, here's how to use this. Here's some, here's some caveats. Nice big red text about when you have to come talk to Data Lab. Um, if you click the Survey Explorer tab, the very next one on your left rail, you get a couple different tabs. You get a drop down at the top for which survey you want. Like not even which question, which survey do you want to look at? You can drop down for everything for the last mm, two, maybe three years. Um, and you start with an overview that tells you here's the fielding dates, here's our number of respondents, here's links to all our project management processes. So you know, Jira and Confluence, all the ticketing stuff is right there. And then you've got tabs for question lists and survey responses. The other thing we added is this, this is the third thing on the left rail, is this survey analysis pieces. When, when we get out survey data, usually the result is you know, a brilliant executive summary done by our graphic designer. But also these, we call them analysis pieces, they're basically news stories um, that have a graphic, nicely brand standard, thanks to Toaster, and narrative analysis, all of that stuff. And we publish them. And we put out you know, a couple every week. And actually, a little bit of brag on my people, they're the most well-read people in all of Bloomberg Law. <laughs> people love reading about the survey data. Um, but we get new analysts in all the time, or we redo surveys, and, and you're like, well, what has somebody written about this yet? And so we started this analysis piece document. It pulls in from our JIRA ticketing service. And you can go, and you can say, add your piece. and look for what survey it is, and all the, the pieces that we've written recently have popped up, and you can tag it in here. So if somebody's new and they're like, oh, I want to write on this data, they can come in here and, and just use the little search bar and say, oh, somebody already wrote on you know, legal tech metrics or you know, employee well-being. Let me read their piece and see if what I want to say is new. Or maybe we can link to it. Maybe we can make it a series. This was super duper helpful. It's still a little bit manual. People have to go in and click the, the teal add button to add their piece. But everything else, like the actual links to the articles and stuff, is, is pre-populated, which is super cool. OK, so now we're going to get more innovations. Next, next is our sample size indicator. So we, we had all the survey dashboards. They were really great. We had filters, dynamic. You can change organization. You can change size. You can look at data by title or by gender. And the problem was people were getting really excited about these drill downs and trying to report on seven people. It's not good. Because back to we have to teach our people about data. So what we did was we built the sample size indicator in. So now you're in. You're looking at your data. you got your question. you got a nice big N equals right here. And it's green. It stays green if you can use this data. As you start doing more drill downs, you get under 30. You get a, like an orange. Like, OK, this is you know maybe a little bit more qualitative. You can do it. You get even lower. And it gives you a bright red, like, please don't use this. We made it stupid easy for people, like really, really easy. You cannot mess this up. If you get orange or red, you better come talk to us before you report on that data. If you got green, you're good. <laughs> Next innovation, compare surveys. So OK, we get sample size indicator. We get all our surveys in one place. And then we have people that come to us and say, hey, well, I want to look at this year's versus last year's. They can either have two instances of our dashboard up, or they go back and forth and back and forth. So we added this little radio button in the middle that says compare results. And if you're just looking at one survey, you leave it at no, and you've got one survey. You click into yes, and it brings you up a second side that you can pull up two surveys side by side. You can change your filters on both. You've got your dynamic sample sizes on both. And it's just so helpful for looking at trending data. Love it. All right, now this is our latest innovation, and you all have to promise to keep mum about it because this is in beta and we haven't let our analysts play with it yet. Okay, cross tabs. So <laughs> these, these are not hard statistically, but we couldn't do it on our dashboards before, and people would come to us with all these ad hoc data requests like, can you just show me this by practice area? Could you show me this by gender or by age? And we could do it, but 
making it self-serve saves a lot of time on our team so that we can go do other more high value things. So I've got a couple of slides that just show little, little snippets of this. So you can see how you can choose two survey questions. Like you still drop down by survey, you've got two survey questions, and then this first one gives you the same color coded sample size indicator of like, okay, if you're looking at this grouping together, can you use it or not? And then it also allows you to do questions that are kind of select all that apply. Hey, which challenges have you faced? Uh, if it, this one, this one, this one, and this one. You're doing a cross tab by that. It's not, you can't easily compare the groups. So if they pick questions like this, they're gonna get this nice red warning. It's like, do not make comparisons until you come talk to us. Because we can tell them how they can do that, but I don't, I don't want that to quite be self-serve just yet. Um, we also have the ability, like if you're just looking at you know, what the data tables come up with, you can get percentages by group. So this is a select all that apply question. So you can see all these groups. It will also show you measures of central, tend central tendency, which is just cool. I mean, a lot of the reporting we do is really pretty basic. We're not running massive models. We're talking about survey data most of the time. But people love reading it, and we've got to make it easy. So that's what we do. Um, wrapping it up, because I promised I'd get Jared back on time, and I'm, oh, I'm close, I'm close. Um, so four A's, not three. Make your data accessible, train your people appropriately, be available for follow-up, and be agile in your process. Thank you. <laughs>